if the feminine has been so rejected by the Christian myth, how has that affected women uh, psychologically? I mean... It has driven them into the animus. It has taken them their natural self-confidence and uh, driven them into, as a compensation, behave like men and get what we, in our jargon, call getting into the animus. Imitate men, uh, behave in a brutal or rational or animacy way. Because uh, they have no self-assurance within their own femininity. Jung was very struck when he was in South India, which is matriarchal in its basic structure. There the men are rather miserable creatures with little white trousers like diapers around them and rather squashed. And, and the women are beautiful going around dig, full of dignity in their saris. Mm -hmm. There it's a bit too much on the other side. And in every big family the grandmother sits on top and rules the whole thing. But there the women are proud of themselves and bear themselves beautifully and look, look much better by that. Mm. Emanate self-confidence. And with us you have to try to be as much as possible a man in order to be halfway recognized. It's hard to imagine what it would be like uh, when the animus uh, isn't ruling. I think the only thing to do is to get the animus out of the way and that the rest comes by itself. Because it's naturally not so much the outer men who really suppress the women, it's just as much the, the animus. And against outer men, if he, they want to suppress you, you can just walk out on them. But the animus is there for the real problem. To, to, one should found a women's liberation society against the animus, not against men. <laughs> that would be women's liberation. But And the then your femininity recovers mm. by itself, mm. I mean it. In a natural way. In a natural way. Mm. After all, one is a female. That's where cr the creative work of a woman comes in, isn't it? When, I mean, the animus, the only way to get him out of the way is to... Uh... Well, you see, the animus has to be, the, is also in the creativity. And there is in his right place. That's why Jung was very much for women doing creative work, because that occupies the animus in what he should do. Mm. Namely, relate to the unconscious. And then uh, also the animus is, first, if somebody hasn't worked on the animus, the animus is undeveloped. And therefore, he's, a, in, let's say, for instance, in scientific work, where I am mostly working, have more experience, the animus is a parrot. He repeats. He copies what, what is in other scientific books, he quotes, he accumulates quotations. Mm -hmm. And then one day you say to yourself, now, how do I understand that myself? Now let's put aside even Jung. Let's not quote Jung. Now let's say, how shall I put that um, myself out of my own experience? And then you notice sometimes you can't even form, articulate it. The, the animus is just quoting all the time. And you have then to, to really, uh, we have a beautiful German word uh, for uh, uh, creativity. It means schöpfen. And schöpfen means to take water up with a bucket out of a well. And that's uh, how it really feels to be creative. You have to say, now, how do I feel or think myself? And then you have to go deep, deep in a depression and go in a well and pull out the water from the depth. Where is the animus while you're doing this? He helps. <laughs> you see, then you, you dream about positive animus figures. When, I, when I'm in the right way of working, I, I dream, for instance, a lot about very busy laborers working like mad, all in their blue laborers' dress. Then I know, aha, now my energies are working on the right thing, working hard. So it's important for 
uh, somewhere for the woman's uh, consciousness to come in and yes. give a focus. Also. The important thing is the, the woman's consciousness disidentifying with the animus because the, the terrible thing is that when one is in the animus, one doesn't feel one is in the animus first. One feels one is oneself. I have made Jung beautiful animus scenes and was absolutely honestly convinced it was my own holy conviction what I was expressing. Only a few hours later I thought, my God, why have I said all that nonsense? How could I? It isn't how I feel. But the, in the moment you are in the animus, you think it's you. So the first thing is to learn to notice, now I'm in the animus. I notice it from my voice and such things. I suddenly go, ah. And it's a feeling in the body. I can't describe it. It's an endosomatic feeling. I feel, now I'm in the animus. Okay. So when I stiffen my shoulders in a certain way, and I know now I'm in the animus. <laughs> <laughs> the bull, you know. <laughs> And then the first thing is to notice, ha, huh? I'm in the animus. Now careful, shut up. And then to disidentify and to think, what do I think, what do I feel? Separately from that entity. But one cannot, you see, the, generally one notices it in contact with men. I, know th I can even use quite primitive men. If I have not a good contact with those laborers, for instance, out there, so then I know I'm in the animus. Mm -hmm. Because they know nothing about psychology, but they just won't take it. They get irritated. They don't know why, but I irritate them if I'm in the animus. So I try it out when I know I'm irritating men, which happens quite often. <laughs> <laughs> then I know, ah, damn it. <laughs>